guys, my name is Chantel, welcome back to my channel and thanks for hanging out with me today. So today is day 7 of the 12 days of anime and today I will be talking about one of my favorites from the spring season as well as this current fall season of 2019. Kono Oto Tomare. Oh my gosh, so this one is another one that I personally feel just flew under everyone's radars and I feel like everybody should be watching and should be talking about it because oh my gosh, it is so good. Especially like I recommend this a lot if you've seen um, Kids on the Slope and if you liked Kids on the Slope, this is for you because oh my gosh, there are so many similarities, especially between Sentaro and our boy Chika. These two are so similar, it's kind of scary. Obviously they're not exactly the same thing, they're completely different, but there's a lot of similarities between these two characters. Anyways, besides comparing it to Kids on the Slope, let's go ahead and talk about my favorites, one of my favorites of 2019. So, what is Kono Ototomare? So Kono Ototomare is basically about our boys, Chika and Kurata. These two characters are completely different. Kurata is like this timid boy who is always afraid to speak out and he is the only member in the Koto club and he's trying to keep it alive as best as he can but the club is run by delinquents and it isn't until our boy Chika comes in and saves the day and beats these delinquents and demands that he be in the Koto club and this is basically where things start and these two just cannot see eye to eye and it isn't until our boy Kurata learns more about Chika and his past and his history and the more that he starts to see him and get to know him a little bit more, the more he realizes he's not what people say he is. Which leads him to stand up for our boy Chika when he's in trouble and thus begins a beautiful friendship. After this, our main girl, Hozuki, joins in the club and when you first meet her, she's kind of a bitch. <laughs> Let me tell you, oh my gosh, she's an interesting and complicated character and when she pops into the club you kind of wonder why she is so mean and it isn't until you start to learn more about her past and why she is the way that she is that you start to understand her and realize she's not really a bitch she's just really really awkward and has a hard time communicating with people and thus begins her journey to like start changing little by little and she slowly starts to learn how to communicate with others and learn to you know put down these walls that she surrounded herself with and starts to learn what friendships are all about and what it means to have all these bonds and as well as her changing her tone when it comes to the koto. So that's basically my little tiny summary for Kono Ototomare, so hopefully that interested you guys into like maybe checking it out. But now that I've given you guys my summary for it, let's go ahead and dive into talking about the things that I love about Kono Ototomare. So, the things that I absolutely love about this series are probably the characters and their development because, oh my gosh, pretty much every character gets a little bit of focus except for like this one character, which I. I guess that, that should say a lot that I don't really remember his name is just because we haven't really had a, too much attention on this character yet. He hasn't had too much involvement in the story besides being Chica's friend. But everybody else has had really, really good moments and quite a bit of character developments. Like, I think my favorite ones out of the two would have to be from the girls, which is Hosuki and our girl um, Kurosu. These two girls started out as complete bitches <laughs> but ended up um, being complete softies and you start to see who they really are um, behind these walls that they put up this person like this appearance that they basically put up which I guess let's go ahead and talk about Hozuki first because I absolutely love her she is so cute and like I said earlier she starts off really really mean and really snobby when she in is introduced into the story and I wasn't really too sure how I was gonna feel about her. I was just like, oh, like I really don't like her personality as much. And she was always picking fights with my boy Chica and Chica would just not back down. He would also like 
bite back at her and like just not let her have her way and it would start with these two bickering all the time and that's kind of like their cute little dynamic it's just the way that they are and it's kind of cute and hilarious when they do it things do get awkward between the two eventually and that is because Hozuki starts feeling some feelings for our boy Chika this is like one of the love interests is between Hosuki and Chika and Hosuki, as I was trying to say earlier, she is completely new to all these feelings because from the very beginning her backstory is pretty sad. She just wants to have her family and she craves, you know, having these bonds that she wasn't able to have as a kid because of her constantly being with the Koto and, and trying to be like this prodigy in the Koto world because everyone had all these expectations on her, which eventually got to her and she was basically not allowed to have any fun and she kind of lost her way and it wasn't until she joins this koto club in her high school that she starts to realize that she can have fun while playing the koto that you know there is time for fun and friends and she just starts to change little by little and she starts learning about friendships what they mean and one of the feelings that she starts to learn about is you know her romantic feelings towards chica and even then, right now, currently with the story, she still is like unsure about her feelings. She still can't figure out what this feeling is. Even then, like she knows that she, her heart is like racing and she gets really blushy, but she's just like keeping this to herself. And she's just like, what is this? Like, what are these feelings? I don't have time for these feelings, but what are they? So she is basically at a point where she like just doesn't know what to do with these feelings. She just kind of goes along and she's just like, okay, it's whatever like I don't know what these are so let's continue <laughs> that's kind of it what it is with her but things get awkward between the two because the, these two oh my gosh they have a lot of cute moments between the two like it's just ah uh, it's so freaking stinking cute I cannot stress that enough especially Chica Chica I cannot stress it enough Chica is always constantly coming through for our girl Hozuki and defending her standing up for her and he is always constantly believing in her and and this faith that Chika has in Hozuki ends up making her like believing in herself and making her like want to continue moving on forward and not just stay stuck in the past all the time she is like taking steps to better herself and to continue on forward and she couldn't do that without our boy Chika which I will get into talking about Chika in a little bit but first let's go ahead and talk about our other girl Kurusu Oh my gosh, like I said earlier, she was also another bitch and her intentions when joining the club were not the best. All she really wanted to do was just kind of ruin the club because she was pretty much jealous of the friendships and bonds that were forming in the Koto club. And this is something that she has been craving because she has been basically like pushed out from her friends. She has like an interesting backstory as well. Not as interesting as Hosuki, but hers is like, it's sad. And you start to realize why she's kind of a little bit mean. Like she's basically like the mean girl at first, but you start to realize, you know, she just wants a true friendship to have people believe in you, like without question. And this is what she ends up getting when she joins the Koto Club. And obviously they give her a second chance and just things end up being dandy with our girl Kurosu and she's really adorable which she also gets a love interest and it is with our boy Kurata and she slowly starts to realize her feelings like her feelings and the way that she approaches her feelings are way different than she, than like Hosoki's because at first with our girl Kurosu she kind of wants to deny her feelings for Kurata and she wants to push them away and she tries to tell herself like there's no time for these feelings I need to focus on the club like I'm just like completely losing focus which to me I feel like Kurosu when it comes to her feelings towards Kurata she is super relatable and adorable because when I see her I see myself in her when she gets like really blushy and cute towards Kurata and like there's this really cute moment where she's looking at her back like his back when she's sitting in her chair and she's just like just like in awe like it's such a sweet silent moment but like it says so much like just seeing her and seeing her like react that way I'm like yep that's kind of how it is to have a crush on someone and fall in love with someone like this is it and like it's so adorable especially when she gets like super awkward and weird and she's just like oh like you're really close or like oh like oh like it's nothing it's nothing you know like little awkward moments like that and like I said earlier she doesn't know what to do with her feelings and thankfully 
she talks to someone and they basically tell her you know you don't have to deny your feelings you can use your feelings to continue moving on forward and basically use these feelings to your advantage which i'm really glad that she didn't like push her feelings completely away she's basically like okay these are my feelings it's okay to feel this way she kind of like makes her goal to confess once they retire from the club and <sighs> our girl man i'm like waiting for that moment until they retire because i want to see that confession so bad but she's determined and you know she's still like really cutesy and blushy towards our boy kurita and kurita I feel like he's slowly catching on. He's a little bit dense, but not as dense as Chica. So I feel like he has an idea, but he also doesn't realize it. Like he's kind of like in the middle. Like it's kind of weird. I mean, if you see Konoto Tomare for yourself, you'll like see that because there's moments where he catches himself and he's just like, wait. And when you see that, you're like, wait a minute. Is he realizing? Is he like, like what's going on here? But I don't think he even knows like his feelings towards Kurusu so I'm waiting until we get that moment with um, him and him realizing what his feelings are towards Kurusu and I guess we'll see from there because right now no one has gotten together no one has really realized their feelings besides their girls and that's about it when it comes to the romance side of Konoto Tomare but I love every moment of it like the romance it doesn't really focus too too much on it but it's there and I really like that. I mean, we did get to like a two full episodes focused more so on the romance than on the koto. But besides our girls, let's go ahead and talk about our boys because I want to talk about our boys. Let's talk about my favorite boy in this series. Um, let's talk about my boy Chica because Chica, oh my gosh, this boy is probably like my best boy for 2019. I absolutely love him. He is like the sweetest boy ever and when you first meet chica he is portrayed as this delinquent who is super violent and is just kind of to himself but as the story goes on you realize that he is not what people say he is he is a complete softy he just acts out of violence because he doesn't like people talking down on the people that he loves like he is just like basically like this outcast that people just look down on and think of him a certain way when he like I said in reality he's not he's like he has like the biggest heart and the most beautiful 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 soul that, out of like all our characters he is constantly sticking up for his friends he is constant he like he is not afraid to say what needs to be said he is probably like the most caring and considerate character like out of the bunch like he is just so so amazing as a character and i really really love him like he reminds me a lot of kyo from fruits basket as well as uenoyama from given which oddly and funny enough he is also voiced by the same voice actor that voices these two other characters which is yuma uchida i love yuma uchida if you love him you will love konoto tomare for his performance as chika my boy chika he is like the best boy ever and you will fall in love with him and he has a lot of cute moments and I think that's why I love this character so so much and why I always want to protect him and anytime someone talks bad about him I want to fight because he's my boy and I love him <laughs> um, moving on to our next character that I'm gonna talk about and probably it's gonna be like our final character that I will talk about which is Kurata, Kurata, oh my gosh, like I said earlier, he is basically this shy and timid boy from the start and he's always afraid to speak what he wants to say and he's always kind of looked down upon and he's always made fun of and it isn't until like Chika and Hosoki and the rest of them come in that he slowly starts to gain a little bit of confidence as the series goes on and he's slowly but surely changing for the better and he slowly starting to not be afraid to speak up for himself or stand up for himself or stand up for his you know club members as well he is learning how to take charge as being the club president for the koto club and you know it's been an amazing journey with kurata he is one of like the most chill characters but like i said he's slowly learning um how to have a little bit more confidence in himself and i really really like that konoto tomare overall has a lot of interesting characters like even like the side characters are just so interesting and you want to learn more about them and it's just 
that's one of the things that I love about Konota Tomare. The way that they tell you the character's backstory and they give you like little hints and pieces of like their backstory and then they give you like BAM! Full story of their backstory, here you go! And you just end up like with tears and you can't help but feel bad for them and you start to understand them. It's just like, oh my gosh, like things start clicking and you're like, that's why they act this way, That this is why they've been harsh, this is why they said this thing. And when we go into backstory mode, I really like how they make the scenes, like it almost looks like a movie playing. Like I can't, I don't know how to explain it, but I'll, like it goes from like full screen to like this little white screen and it almost looks like if you're watching it like at the movie theater. And it's just like, it's just, it's just a cool little like detail there. And now that we're talking about like little details in the animation, another thing I do want to mention before I forget is I really do like when there's a certain moment where it's just like super cute and sweet. They go into like this watercolor moment and I really, really like how they do that. But besides that, um, I guess let's go ahead and talk about the music because oh my gosh, the music in this. It's so great. I personally love the OST for Konota Tomare. Like there's moments where you hear like this flute playing in the background and to me whenever I hear the flute it gives me like Breath of the Wild vibes, especially like when you visit like Rito Village in that game. Like it like just imagine that but into Konota Tomare like the soundtrack playing there. Like it's just it's so beautiful. Like the soundtrack is so pretty. And on top of that the koto. Oh my gosh, the koto sounds so beautiful and I really like it and I really like hearing the characters and how they play because the way that they play is so different and so unique and so beautiful and I really really like that about that and it just kind of tells you like their personalities as they play and I just think that's a really nice detail to add on to there and speaking of the koto I really do like that we learn about the koto as we go on in each episode as the story goes on basically and you know, the koto is something that's not known over here in the West, at least here in the US. I know nothing about it, so it was really interesting to like dive into this instrument that I have no knowledge about and just learn about it slowly but surely. And it's just been really, really interesting. And that's one of the most interesting parts of Konoto Tomine is learning about this instrument that's so unique to Japan. But other than that, I think that's pretty much all I have to say with Konoto Tomine. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing me like just ramble on about it because I personally absolutely love this series and I feel like it's super underrated and people should be talking about this one more. Like I said, especially if you love Kids on the Slope, you will just fall in love with this, fall in love with the characters. Like the characters are just so great and I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this series and I will see you guys for day 8 of the 12 days of anime. Bye!